Hello friends again and this is the third video in this series on scientific publication in which I'm talking to you about how to write a paper. In this particular video we are going to talk about observations and results. In the last two videos we discussed the introduction and then we talked about how to write the methods of the paper. In this particular video which is the third video in the series we are talking about how to approach the observations and results section of your paper. So the results usually are divided into two portions. The first section of the results describes your patient population and baseline. So you want to tell the reader how the population was constructed or what was the characteristics of the subjects at the baseline when the study was started. So this is what is the table one of your paper. And this is also the first section of any manuscript when you're describing the results section. The second section of the results portion or the results section of your paper, the second part of the results section is the one in which you describe what changes happened in the subjects after your intervention. So in these, you generally approach it by first talking about the primary outcome, which was the main outcome of your study. Then you approach it with the secondary outcome. So in any study, you have the primary, the most important outcome, and then the secondary or the other outcomes that you were trying to study. So in the first portion of the results, you talk about the baseline population. And in the second portion of your results, you talk about the primary outcome, the secondary outcome, and then also describe if you found any unexpected findings or changes in the population after your intervention. It's best to give the actual numbers and percentages in the results section, and you do or do give or show flow charts which indicate the changing patient disposition at different points in the study. The flow charts are a good way of presenting information. And a good thought in this part is the consort diagram. So if you Google the consort diagram, this is an easy uh, template that you can find in which you can fill in the numbers in your particular study on a previously existing, well-established and well-accepted template from the consort guidelines. The consort guidelines are the guidelines which have been provided, which give you ways how a randomized trial should be reported and so you should be using these more often when you are writing so okay so uh, i would also talk to you now how to develop your tables and figures in the next part of this video so when you are writing the results section there are three ways to approach it one that you use the chronological progress of the study so while you're describing the results you could just follow the chronological progress what came first you describe first what came later you describe later but you may also want to use the most logical way of presenting findings so you might say that sometimes the most logical way is not the most chronological way both are acceptable in fact you may also want to describe the most important findings first and follow them up with the less important findings so all three approaches are absolutely fine and very much acceptable and are open to you and you're welcome to use any of those approaches while describing the results section of your paper while you're writing the manuscript is good to say that you refer to data and while you're referring you could say refer to figure x or while in reference to table y and that's a usual way and practice of writing things but it is generally not acceptable to repeat the numbers that you have already presented in tables and you do not repeat the numbers that you have written in the manuscript into the tables you can state the numbers from the figures if the precision is required while writing your manuscript if you find that there are a lot of numbers which are coming up in a paragraph then it's always best to make a table out of them Let's talk a little bit more on tables and figures. There should be no duplication. Your main findings should always come in words and the other findings can come in the tables. There are three things that we need to remember about the tables. Tables are the best way to present detailed numerical data. 
they show actual and precise numbers which are actually very important and when readers are reading the manuscript they want to know what was the actual result what were the precise numbers and it's easiest to present them in the tables also tables are very helpful when you are comparing groups in fact if you have two or more groups it's most advisable and it's the best strategy to write them in tables rather than writing them in the manuscript in kind of paragraphs what about graphs so graphs are generally used for indicating changes over time tables like we said are best for comparing groups however graphs are best for indicating changes which are occurring over time in the population if you have a large number of data points that you want to display best use graphs graphs generally take a lot of space and when you are sending an article to a printed journal they are very conscious of the space that is going to be taken up how much ink is going to be taken up so generally graphs are not used to show some simple data they are rather used for having a complicated data with a large number of data points so please remember tables are helpful for comparing groups and graphs are good for indicating changes over time both tables and figures should have a clear declarative title which should be written in the form of a sentence and most content should be evident from these sentences itself also you should remember that the table is a single independent unit it should be understood without the reader having to refer to the text of the article so if somebody is reading your manuscript and comes across a particular table they should be able to understand the table by reading the table itself and not requiring to go back to the manuscript to understand what the table means you should have a, a, a decent number of columns and lines if there are too many lines and they are exceeding one page redraw the table to fit into one page if the table appears too narrow or too broad it should generally be avoided and if the table is looking very small then you should best convert it to a text let's talk a little bit about figures now figures are best drawn before you start writing if you have too much clutter best is to redraw then a table should have captions it should have lesions and should have abbreviations each table should have a caption should have a legend under the table and should have the description of what abbreviations has been used in the table itself case studies should be supported with images in which you have made it a point that you have removed the identifying characteristics of the patients and you have obtained permission from them before having actually uh, published those so while you are choosing the graph be careful in what kind of graph you choose whether you are putting up a line graph or a bar graph or a histogram so a line graph is a graph with plotted data pairs and connected line segments that examines a change in quantity over time a bar graph compares uh, categories of data and a histogram is a graph that relates to the data shown in a frequency table usually in the results we do not use adverbial intensifiers such as clearly essentially quite basically rather fairly really virtually because these appeal to the readers of the emotion uh, by, to the readers emotions but they lower your objectivity so avoid these words in the results section of your paper in the results you should not give any interpretations you should not give any references you should only describe your own work and not anyone else's work and when you are tempted to write a reference that means that you are now ready to write the discussion of your paper and now we will proceed to the next video thank you so much for listening to this video in which we have described the observations and the results section of a manuscript now in the next video we will be talking about the introduction so stay tuned